this is probably the hardest part if you want to get your sponsorship and everything settled you first need to go through a lottery and this is honestly the most crucial moment in this whole process because if you don't get picked you're already out of the game hi everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is marta and welcome back to a new video this video is not going to be your typical video that you usually see on my channel this one is going to be all about the h1b process for the visa the lottery the international student stuff that we go through. I myself am also an international student that went through the whole process and I looked up so many YouTube videos on this topic, seeing if I could figure anything out, see if there were people that I could relate to. And it was just kind of hard to find actual videos that were not made by lawyers and stuff. So I wanted to make this video um, for anyone out there that needs a bit of guidance and help with everything. Um, so I'm just gonna tell you my story. Obviously every case is different and everyone has a different process. So I just wanna tell you how it went with me and my process because it was a long ride. Like I'm gonna tell you, it was not fun, but I just wanted to make this video for you uh, in case you needed anything. So let's jump right into the video. So a little bit of a background about me. I'm Portuguese, but I was born and raised in the Netherlands, which is also where I got all of my education. I got my bachelor's in international business and decided to do my master's um, in business administration in the USA. I already knew I wanted to do this for the longest time. So I got accepted into Cal State Long Beach um, and I went there for two years. Um, and obviously like after you get your master's, you want to start working there. Um, so if anybody wants any tips and tricks on before this whole thing, after graduation, then let me know. That will be a whole separate video. This one will just be mainly focused on the H1B process, etc. So after you graduate um, your master's, you get OBT, but depending on your type of study, you get amount of years. What I remember, I think STEM is three years and the other studies are one year. Since I did business, it was only one year of OPT, um, which means that you have only one chance of getting through the whole sponsorship situation and the lottery. Um, but if you have three years, obviously you have three chances. So that was the first thing. Um, this video might go back and forth a bit because it's there's, there's just a lot of stuff to keep into account, but I'm just gonna speak from my experience again. So I applied for OPT. You can decide when you start your OPT year. I did it as far away as possible, like the latest date possible, just because I would want to have more time to figure things out. So with OPT, you get one year of working. You don't have a specific working visa for this. This is just allowed based on your master's or bachelor's program. So you get just one full year of working on your visa. And after that, you have to get a working visa, which is basically the H1B. In this OPT year, obviously you have to find a company to work for, otherwise you're not allowed to stay in the US. So I did a bunch of interviews. This is probably the hardest part of this whole process is finding companies that are actually interested in sponsoring you. Because you could technically work for a company for that one year, but eventually like if they don't want to sponsor you, you have to quit. Like you cannot work more than that one year of OPT. It was really hard to actually find a company that wants to sponsor you. Um, I tried many different types of companies. Um, schools actually have a lot of networking events. They have a database showing all the companies that have sponsored in the past. Um, there's a bunch of different venues that you can go about, but it was, it was hard. What I did do in the meantime is figure out the whole uh, sponsorship process because every time you had an interview, you have to like tell them if you needed any paperwork done by the company because you're international because you're not a US citizen. And every time you click yes, usually you don't even get invited for an interview. And if you do, they're gonna ask you all these questions. And I just wanted to make sure that I had all the information possible because you cannot lie about this or like try to make a story about this because the companies eventually will figure it out and then they might even not sponsor you. So I was always very, very upfront with every employer that I was talking to with during the interview process. And if they were like iffy about it or they just, for sure, I would immediately just say no because it's literally your future that's tied to this, right? So you don't want to just get any type of job. You need something that you trust in, etc. I was literally always prepared. I knew basically based on research, because obviously I didn't speak to any lawyers. I basically just knew based off research on the internet, what exactly the processes were, what the due dates are, what is needed uh, for the employer to do, and just the basic stuff. Like obviously I didn't talk to a lawyer, so this was just based on internet research, but 
it was enough for me to explain to employers what it meant. I was looking at a lot of big companies, also smaller, and I always wanted to work for a either startup or scale up company, just because I liked the more personal interaction rather than in a big corporation. So actually through a friend of mine that actually lives here in the US, I got in contact with one of her friends that worked at a small company and um, I got into the interview. We talked about the whole sponsorship process and they were down to sponsor me, which was like such, such a relief. I've been through so many rejections, which can be hard, like getting rejection every single time and people not wanting to sponsor you. It like doesn't keep you motivated to keep looking, but I just kept going and then this landed on my lap. Like I was, I was beyond stoked. Once I found this, I was just really, really happy that I could move forward to step number two. So obviously, like because this was a smaller company they had never sponsored before, um, I wanted to make sure that I was on top of everything and being as helpful as possible, which is also something that you should do, in my opinion, because this is your situation. You are, this is like your thing. And I didn't want to be a burden to the company that I was working at. So just to give you an idea on timelines, this was around June, July. This was like midsummer when I got the job and when my OPT started counting. So I worked there for a whole year. And during that whole year, we started prepping documents. Um, if you want to get your sponsorship and everything settled, you first need to go through a lottery. So the lottery is usually around end of February. Um, so I just made sure that I was on top of all the deadlines and knew exactly what paperwork was needed. For this specific uh, moment in time, I, we did not have a lawyer yet because it was just a submission of your name, um, just basic, basic information that you really don't need a lawyer for. Although like you could if you wanted to, but for me and based on the research that I did, I told my my boss, like, we don't need a lawyer at this point. So so we submitted the basic details into the lottery system. Um, again, this was like end of February, and then it was just a moment of waiting. Um, it took only a few weeks, it was not too long. So there's a lot of people that want to get the visa and submit their name into the lottery. So this year, let me just double check. Yeah, so I have a graph over here. So just to put some numbers into perspective, I have a little table over here. So my submission was for 2024 and there were over 780,000 registrations. And there's a cap on the amount of people that they can allow to move forward to stage number three in this case. Um, and there were only 188,000 spots from the 780,000. So you can tell how many people did not get picked from the lottery. And this is honestly the most crucial moment in this whole process, because if you don't get picked, you're already out of the game. Um, and as you can see, the percentage is pretty low compared to the amount of people that submitted their names. By this video, obviously you can tell that I was a lucky one of them. I did not expect that to be honest. Um, everywhere on the internet, you see that people that are like researchers, scientists, like very intelligent people get picked for the lottery. I do digital marketing. So I was like, you know, it would be amazing if I get it, but I was not counting on it just because I did not think I was as special enough. That's how they call that but apparently I was. So I heard the good news that I got selected for lottery March 25th of 2024. So this is like a month after the submission of the lottery, I got picked. This meant that I was able to move to the next round. Um, and this is where the important parts start. Once you get selected, you need to find a good lawyer. So usually big companies have company lawyers, but since I was working at a smaller company, uh, we had to find an external one. So we looked around. I had some lawyers that I knew through the MBA program that I was at. So we contacted those first and we did some online research. And really what I learned in this stage is you have to find a lawyer that really believes in your case. Um, I called with a few lawyers that were literally basically just laughing at my case. They were like, yeah, like good luck type of thing. And the attitude was just really negative where I was like, damn, like, do you really think I cannot get it? You know, like it was such a weird experience. These are lawyers that have like years and years of experience and they were laughing at my case. So obviously you must know how I felt. Like I was like, there's no way I'm going to get it. Like I kept getting all these signs where it was like, Marta, forget it. Like you're not getting it. But you know, I got selected. So I just wanted to move forward. So my my boss started looking at lawyers too. And eventually we found someone that really believed in my case. I was like, we're going to make this work. Like this is going to happen. You're not supposed to be in constant like communication with the lawyer, but because this was before we even signed her on, 
um, I had a call with her and I really asked critical questions because I wanted to make sure that this was someone that cared about the case rather than the other lawyers. Because obviously I had a bad experience with the ones I talked to in the past. So just asked her a lot of questions and she made me feel, she made me feel really good. So we found our lawyer, which was great. And then the paperwork started. So our lawyer emailed me a list of everything that they needed for my case. And I made sure that on my side, I did everything as quick as possible because I know these processes take a lot of time. So as soon as I would get an email with, hey, we need this and this and this, within hours, I would make sure that she received X, Y, Z. Like I was like on top of it just so they could move as quick as possible too. Because I forgot to mention this earlier, but you can pay for an expedited fee and everything will go much quicker. We didn't do that. So this is literally the timeline of a regular person in line. This was like, obviously in March, I got the notification that I got uh, accepted into the lottery. So at this point, we're working with a lawyer. It's April, May, and then all of a sudden June comes by. And my OPT, remember, is only one year. And after that one year, you're not allowed to work. So I did some research because I was like, there's no way that you can't keep working if you're in the process of getting your H-1B visa. So I did some research and then I found gap cap extension which basically allows you to work an extra three months after your OPT ends because you are in the process of getting your paperwork done. And no one had told me about this, uh, which is kind of a weird situation, but I just Googled. And this again, like this is what I'm telling you, like you need to do your own research and find out everything you can, because if we didn't, then I needed to stop working for a huge period of time until my paperwork cleared. So make sure you're doing all your research. I'm telling you now, but there might be even more things that I Luckily didn't get around, but they might happen to you. So make sure you do research. But yeah, I got my gap cap extension and worked for another three months. And in the meantime, you can check your status on the USCIS website if you have the receipt number of your case. Uh, my boss sent that to me. So I was able to track the status of my case. Your status usually always stays on your request has been received and it stayed on that for a long, long time. And then August 11th, um, a change to request for additional evidence. And I was like, what is this? Basically, they were asking for more paperwork about my high school diploma, my bachelor's diploma, like more details about me. So we sent that over um, and continued working. There were still no updates. And I got close to a point where I wasn't allowed to work anymore because those three months were about to end. Um, then November 1st, we got another request for additional evidence. They wanted more paperwork and listen like if you think about it we started back into february and we're now in november and there's still no certainty about my case because at this point you can still get denied like there's still a way of getting denied um so then november 1st i got another request for additional evidence we sent that right away the same day so then november 6th it changed to case being actively reviewed which is a good sign because that means they receive the evidence they're looking over it and then November 7th came by and that was the day that I figured out that I got approved, which it literally said case approved. I'll put it in the screen. I was so happy this was done, honestly. I was happy, but I was also like, finally, because it was months and months and months of waiting and you just have no idea what's going on. So it was a really stressful like year basically of just waiting and not knowing what's about to happen with your future. So I got approved, which is amazing. Then my lawyer instantly made an appointment at the embassy because I was born and raised in the Netherlands. My appointment was made there. I didn't think you're able to get your visa in the US, but because I hadn't been home for a year, I just told the lawyer, like, I want to go home and get my appointment there. So she made the appointment for me in Amsterdam. And then within a few weeks, I went there. Um, so you have to make sure that you have all of your paperwork because they're going to go through everything and make sure everything is legit. And this is also where they do a little interview with you. It wasn't too extensive. I thought they were going to ask more, but they just ask you basic questions about your work, what you're doing, just trying to test you in a way, just to make sure that everything is legit on the paperwork. Because obviously if there's something lied about, then you know, your visa can still get denied. So I had my interview and the guy told me, congratulations, you got your visa. And I felt such a relief coming off my shoulders because I know it was getting closed, my case got approved online, but this is still the moment where it could be decided yes or no. So I got approved, they took my passport away from me and then a week later uh, they shipped it and then I got my passport back with a new visa. So we're talking about a seven, eight month period of just waiting and waiting until the H-1B visa came through. 
So then obviously they sent over my passport. Um, I actually had to pick it up at a special place, which is like an hour away from my house, just to sign it and make sure it was legit. Um, it was like a passport situation. I don't know what it was. It was kind of weird, but yeah, overall, I got my visa and then some weeks later I flew back to the US. Um, I still had all my paperwork in one spot, uh, all the paperwork that I brought to the embassy. Because even when you enter the country, they might check some paperwork. So always have that on you when you fly. But it was very easy to get back in because they were just asking like, oh, you're an H1B, what company do you work for? Okay, welcome. You know, like it's easier to get back into the country. That is my whole experience. And the amount of stress this gave me over the last months is not comparable like i really hope that everyone that goes through this with this video just knows kind of what to expect because i didn't know it was going to take this long i didn't know that i was going to need gap cap extension there was like a lot of things that i just wasn't aware of so i really really hope that i can even if it's just one of you guys that i can help out by just sharing this information it's a long process and you have to be really patient and you have to be on top of everything even I was on top of the lawyer because obviously lawyers work on other cases too. But I just want to make sure that mine was taken care of. So I would check in with my boss every so often because I've heard about lawyers just, you know, like putting the case to the side and then people still not getting their visa because things were not done on time, etc. So um, just make sure you're really on top of it in whatever way you could. But yeah, now I'm happy I got my visa. Um, so, you know, we accomplished this, but obviously there was a lot to go through before getting here so i really hope that everyone that's going through it i know that the process is going to start soon again it's like into february now so i really wish you all good luck with the whole case um and you know just stay positive i really tried to and it worked although there were a lot of obstacles it worked in the end and that's what matters so if there's any questions about this whole process please leave them in the comments down below i'll try to answer whatever i know and you know good luck to all of you out there who are going to go through this process um if there's any advice or any questions you have again please ask them down below um and i'll be happily helping you out with whatever i can so thank you so much for watching and then hopefully i'll see you in my next video bye